In this video tutorial, we're going to go through how to put a single record, in this case a grey heron, into the iRecord platform. So first of all, we need to bring up a recording form, and that can be found under the record option on the main menu. Now we're going to use the enter casual record, which is for entering single records. So we click on that and it brings up the enter casual record recording form. Now just ignore this first bit and the first piece of information we're going to enter is the date. So it's really simple. We just type in 19th of the 9th, 2023, and that's our date in there. Alternatively, you can select this little calendar icon and then it, a pop-up calendar comes and you can select the date you want from there. Now, before we move on, I'm just going to comment on these little icons here, these little padlocks. If you're going to enter multiple records in one at a time, uh, it can be quite time consuming to enter the same information again and again. So if you've got bits of information that are going to remain same, like, for example, the second thing is the recorder name, which is me, you can click on the little padlock to lock that information so that when the blank form comes up after you've submitted this record, it will store that information. It just allows things to be a bit quicker. So we've covered the recorder. That was me. I was the one that observed it. Next thing is putting our species. Now, iRecord will only allow you to put in species from the UK species dictionary. So it won't accept random species or species that are not in the UK, etc. So we're going to, you can put in the scientific name or you can put in the common name if it's got a widely accepted common name. So in this case, the grey heron, we can start typing that in. As we type in grey, it will bring up anything that has grey in the name. And then as we type in heron, it should narrow it down. There we go. So idea scenario will enter that in. The next option here is certainty. And this is just to let the verifier know how certain we are of the ID. Uh, there are three options here, certain, likely, and uncertain. So it's just giving the verifier your opinion about how sure you are with this record. Now, herons are very difficult to confuse with other things, so I'm pretty certain. Uh, quantity, numerical value in here, I just saw one. Um, then you've got these options of to record the sex and the stage. Uh, I'm just going to leave them as not recorded. I don't really know much about telling the difference between a male or female heron, and I don't know much about telling the difference between a juvenile and adult, so I'm leaving them as not recorded, and that's absolutely fine. Identified by. So this box is here in case uh, the identifier is different from the recorder. So an example of that could be that somebody has collected a specimen and showed it to somebody, and that other person has identified it to species level. So that would give you two different names. In this case, I'm both recorder and identifier. So I'm just going to type my name in again. I think if I leave it blank, it puts me in automatically. But just to be sure, I'm going to type that in. So the next section here, photographs, photos, this is where we can submit photographs that were taken that help prove that our species determination is correct uh, and they can help the verifier. Now, in this case, I didn't take any photographs. The heron was quite far away um, and it's a really distinctive species. So it's unlikely that somebody is going to question my ID. Herons are found in this area, very distinctive. I've got a reasonable level of experience in natural history to know that that's correct. So I'm leaving that blank. But if you did want to add photos, you simply click on this button here and it will bring up um, your folders where you can navigate to the photographs that you want to submit. I think you can submit up to four. So um, you can submit multiple from different angles if you photograph something from a few different angles. Sensitivity. So you tick this box for a sensitive record if there's a reason to hide this record from the general public. Now, they will be able to see that it exists, but it will blur the geographic resolution so they can't pinpoint exactly. This should really only be used for certain species. So, for example, if you've got rare butterflies or rare orchids that people could use the location to go and collect a specimen when we don't want that, you mark that as a sensitive record. Other examples might be bat roosts in people's homes. They could be badger sets, so that we're not alerting badger baiters to where sets are. Um, the best thing to do is to check with the natural history group or recording scheme that cover that group and ask them what their opinion is on what should be sensitive and what shouldn't. A grey heron is not a sensitive record, so we're going to leave that blank. 
location so here you should put a name of the location you should avoid putting street addresses and things like that because that adds personal information so in this case it was found in the grounds of denham lodge so i'm gonna type that and then we, what we need to do is get a spatial reference now i know the grid reference i've got it written down here but you can find it using the map. So I'm going to do that and see if I can get it to match what I think it is. So I think it should be TQ051846. So to search for the location on a map, you, you can actually type in the name of the location. So if it's a park, a reserve, or a street, you type it in, click the search button, and it will come up with a couple of different options. So it's this top one here, I believe. So I'll click on that, and the map goes to where it is. Now, I'd already done this previously, so it is there. So that pinpoints the middle of Denham Lodge. That's not exactly where my heron was found. So I'm using the navigation tools on the map here to zoom out because um, I want to select this whole square here so that I've got a six-figure grid reference. So as I said, TQ051846, that's the correct grid reference. And we can see it's here. So it was somewhere in these grounds here. I don't think I need to give more specific than that. It's a heron. It's quite a mobile um, species. So that should be useful enough. Uh, habitat is not a compulsory thing to enter, but it is really, really useful. So if I have a look at the primary list of habitats, where we've got quite broad habitat types. I can see here we've got a few different options. It was in a river, so I'm going to go with inland water. And then you'll see a second drop down box appears here. If I select that, there's a few different options. Uh, it was in running water, it was in a river. So I'm going to select that there. And then I'm just going to make a note that um, Grey Heron observed walking in shallow river in urban environment. Just as a, a few extra notes there for the recording scheme. And then all I simply do is click save and that should submit my record. If I've done anything wrong, it would come up with an error telling me I need to correct what I've put in. And as we can see, here we go. There is another blank form if I want to put another record in and that field that I click the padlock on is now locked. Now, it is tempting to go and look at your records straight away. So just a word of warning, when you submit records into iRecord, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for them to appear. So I recommend checking 20, 30 minutes after you've input records. So if they don't appear straight away after submitting them, it doesn't mean you need to submit them again. They just take a little bit of time to come through. Thank you for listening to this video tutorial.